Hi, we're back in the studios of Truth Is What Matters with my co-host Ray, who was behind the camera for our shots outside on the nativity scene. And Ray, I know since last show you've gained quite a beard here. Are you getting ready for the St. Nicholas uh, mode here for our, <laughs> for our Christmas special? <laughs> well, this week my uh, my shaver uh, won't take this off if I let it go oh, too long. What about straight? I let it go for a couple days, <laughs> and I have a hair clipper that oh. stopped working and so I can in a hurry get it all off at the last minute when I'm going to show myself in public. <laughs> what about a straight razor? No, don't, don't get a straight razor near the neck or anything, right? <laughs> so I have a barber one that will take it off and then I ran looking for the dog's clipper mm -hmm. and the dog's oh, clipper. Oh, the dog's clipper. Oh, yeah, that I was going to use the dog clipper on it and my wife said, oh, that didn't work very well so I tossed <laughs> it out. So. <laughs> so I didn't want to do the time with the scissors, uh -huh. but I basically wasn't appearing anywhere in public for a couple of days and accidentally... Sort of incognito everywhere you yeah, go, right? Yeah, I decided to look grubby and then the grubbiness is becoming Santa Claus, I hope. So oh, I, year, I see it ties into our Christmas Maybe special. New Year I'll do something about this. <laughs> well, I see you got your gym outfit on too. <laughs> Yeah, I Is started my... a direct coalition here with the beard and the gym outfit? Well, I started my New Year's resolution early. Oh, good. I've got a gym membership. Mm -hmm. And being the Scottish, a little bit of Scottish background that I have, um, they were offering a special. So oh, okay. So I had to take okay. it early at Kirchichini's. The, There's the a plug town. there. we got to get some royalties off that plug. <laughs> so they offered a free extra month if you joined in December. So oh. I thought, well, you know, that's the way you get started early. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm ready to exercise and maybe by summer I will announce how much weight I've lost. Uh, Not like you, a Rob you, Ford, like a You can tell that I thing. need the exercise. Well, me too. Uh, especially with turkey <laughs> and festivities coming up with the uh, eggnog and everything else. Well, Ray, when I look at the beard, it reminds of St. Nicholas. But, year, uh, but years ago, you know, back in the uh, fourth century, there was a person named St. Nicholas. And he lived in, uh, I believe it was what they called then Petra, which was Turkey. And actually, he gained a lot of reputation of actually helping out people. He actually put coins in people's shoes as they left them outside the door. But there was actually a saint, I believe they call him a saint, called St. Saint Nicholas. Yes. Uh, he was a monk, or, mm -hmm. or he, he was a priest, I guess, but he worked in a group home. Like, or, or they, uh, an orphanage. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I, I think the practice of giving gifts had shown up uh, among Christians to their children. And so the orphanage kids never got a present. So he told them to leave their stocking on the end of their bed. And in the morning, he stuffed their stocking with goodies. And that's where the stocking idea started. And uh, after he died, and when this story got told, right. um, lots of other myths got added to what he did, like what you just said was probably a little bit more of a myth, mm -hmm. that it involved other people leaving them outside their doors and stuff, but strictly speaking he did this within an orphanage, and the idea of giving a gift at Christmas time originated prior to that with Christians doing that, and it was out of his Christian charity that he wanted the, the children who didn't have parents and didn't have that anyone to give them a gift and wanted them to have one. So that's how it got started. So this whole myth of what they have today is Santa Claus. It, it re there really was a person called St. Nicholas and this yes. whole thing is not a myth. It really originated as a As far person. as a man that lived, uh, that worked in an orphanage, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what about all this, as we know, this uh, commercialism around Christmas time and, and buying gifts. When we go back to the fourth century, uh, St. Nicholas actually did give gifts to people. But do you think the commercialism had, and has took over a lot of things now? Well, um, to, I think it's a push and pull. Um, the, the, the festive season mm -hmm. um, existed prior to Christians taking it over and making it the Christian festive season within paganism. And it was the festive, festival of lights. And uh, basically it was the celebration of the shortest day of the year. Um, they would find every way to light things, make them bright, put out candles, whatever, and celebrate the fact that the light is now going to start returning. And then pretty soon they were going to celebrate New Year's Day on April 1st mm -hmm. when they could start planting their crops again. So uh, this was in anticipation that we're through the worst part of the winter now and light's starting to come. 
So uh, as Christianity began to flourish, some of the some of the things that were practiced sort of got incorporated into Christianity because the people became Christians who used to have this practice of celebrating. So uh, the celebrations that were pagan were more along the lines of seeing how drunk he could get for 12 mm. days, mm -hmm. right? The 12 days of Christmas was a party. <laughs> so, that, so that's true, 12 days of Christmas and everyone said, so yeah. it really was true. It was 12, 12 days. days. Yeah, yeah. Now when we no, go okay. back to Christ, Christmas and Christianity, um, the Christmas tree, which is the general symbol of Christmas, it, it is sort of a, a pagan symbol, as you just said? Uh, it is. Um, it predates Christianity, and it really has no meaning in Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the part of what they would do is cut a tree down and bring it in the house, and it has a nice turpentine smell. And uh, um, the, Bi <laughs> the Bible actually talks about how pagans cut down a tree and bring it in their house and worship it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, it's not a, it doesn't tell them, it doesn't say a lot about it. It just reflects on the fact that that's what they do as an odd thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, so as things have gone along, today we have um, mixing of traditions that has happened back that far. So, so Christianity completely flourished and it became an extremely Christian event. And what started that was uh, the New Year's Day celebration got moved back to January 1st. It, it, it interrupted the 12 days of Christmas. They used to continue till about the seventh day into the January. And um, there, there used to be a celebration of uh, the beginning of Christ's ministry, not his birth, mm -hmm. that was around the seventh or eighth day of G December. So there was a special mass that was held to celebrate that Christ was beginning his public ministry that lasted three years before he was crucified. Well, somebody decided that now that we're celebrating Christ's birth in the middle of this 12 days of Christmas became popular, they would like to have a special Mass to celebrate Christ's birth. Prior to this Mass, they, they had to celebrate the advent of his, of his ministry. Mm -hmm. So they started having a Mass on December 25th to celebrate the Mass for Christ's birth. And so, uh, well, why is it now that, that <laughs> a lot of us that, that that know or don't know celebrate that December twenty fifth as the birth of Christ? Uh, according to some of the selections that I've seen, and according to some of the research that you've done, uh, Christ was not born on December the twenty fifth. No, no, he wasn't. Um, although twenty fifth is a very appropriate time to celebrate the birth of Christ, because the Bible indicates that he is the light of the world. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of when the, when the darkest day of the, of, of the equinox is actually the 22nd of December, but somehow they use 25th to be that day. But the celebration of, of lights was always that the light is now increasing. So it would be after the 22nd, but they somehow ended up with it as the 25th. And the celebration of Jesus coming into the world and being the light of the world is very, it's a very... Uh, it fits in well with the Christian message to celebrate it at that time of the year. But it is an arbitrary decision because uh, as you were doing some research, tell me, you did some research this week and it, it concurred with some I've done in the past. Tell, tell, tell me what you were well, uh, uh, about quite when his birthday actually is. Finishing my research there, but the information that, that, that I have searched out, that it's somewhere that he was born, somewhere around September the 10th, September the 11th, uh, at 3 BC, at approximately between 6.30 and 7.30 p.m. at night, because the equinox, as you mentioned, but the, also the kind of the, the calendars they were using at the, the Jewish time. Calendars. At the Jewish calendars. The Jewish calendars at the time, and the way the astrologers figured out the way the equinox was going, the way the moon was at the time, and the, and the planets at that certain time, they got it down to uh, some somewhere around the middle of September, September 11th, and they pretty well got it down to about 3 BC. Now, does that does that sound familiar with the research you've done for your books? Yes, it is. I, I I've done a write up about when Jesus was born, what year he was born. Um, the, there's a fellow named Arthur uh, uh, Anderson. 
think it's his name is Arthur. Sir Sir Walter Anderson, I think it is. Sorry, I haven't recalled his name very well. Um, he indicated that he thought it might be four BC. Mm -hmm. And in my research, I thought it might be as early as six BC that he was born. So as far as setting the years go, I've got a track that explains the discrepancies. Um, but uh, um, the the Bible itself has some clues as to when Jesus was born. And um, after this program, we'll try to put some links to a website that uh, can let somebody explore the, the way the Bible explains when he was born. There's some research that was done at another website that I, I am not 100% certain that they are correct, but I, I'm fairly certain they are. Uh, but I think it's worthy to uh, link to them and, and uh, produce their explanation of how they've calculated it based from the Bible uh, to agree that it's September 11th. So. And it, it's really strange when we bring in that date, September the 11th, 9-11, <laughs> when we go into this whole World Trade Tower thing, yeah. and uh, with the information that, that I have received, it, it seemed to somewhere around 3 BC that Christ was born September the 11th. So mm -hmm. when you get into uh, playing of numbers and that, which some people believe in numerology and astrology and things like that, you know, there is some sort of, coalition or something with that September the 11th 3 BC and yeah. this uh... I've never tried to make a connection with that but um, numerologies do matter in the Bible like there are certain numbers like seven is the, mm -hmm. seven is the day of God seventh day is the day he chose to rest six is the day of man sixth day of creation was when God created man so like in prophecy when it talks about the number of the beast being six 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 mm -hmm. Um, it's as perfect as a man can be, I believe, as part of the interpretation of this person that will be an antichrist that comes in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but he couldn't be described with a seven because that is the number reserved for, for God and prophecy. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of interesting numerologies in the Bible, but I haven't seen a particular connection to September 11th. Yeah, it's so. just something that just came to my head all <laughs> it, of a sudden. I, I see that one as possibly more of a coincidence than, yes. than uh, specific. But uh, Christians didn't celebrate Christmas for hundreds of years after Christ came. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they didn't celebrate his birth, they celebrated the beginning of his ministry, mm -hmm. and they celebrated his death on the cross and his resurrection at uh, Passover. Now when we talk about the, the, the birth of Christ at, around what we just mentioned, was there a definite date on the crucifixion? Uh, when he was crucified, what date exactly? Yes, and it's recorded in Scripture as well. And uh, I got some written information about that, but uh, what we'll do is maybe describe that when we get more towards Easter on the program. Yes. And we'll just talk about the... So, so the date... It, it, it would correspond with the Passover that the Jews mm -hmm. celebrate. And uh, there's a slight difference of when we celebrate Easter to when Jews celebrate Passover today. Yes. I believe that there's some incorrect... That, that it would be more correct to celebrate it according to the Jewish calendar. But we can talk about that more when Easter comes around. <laughs> so numerology <laughs> figures a lot in the Bible, as we were talking about, because some people think numerology, uh, it's all hogwash now, but it really uh, has a definite meaning in certain passages of the Bible. Yeah, there's certain passages and prophecies regarding... Uh, there's a prophecy that specifically was prophesied over 400 years before Christ came to the day that he was crucified. They prophesied that he would be crucified on a certain day that the Messiah would come, but that he would be cut off. And then there was a whole way of calculating when that would happen, and it happened on the day that Christ was crucified. Which is a slightly different topic than, to, than today, but... Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of... There's mathematical stuff you can do with the prophecies to, to, say, to see whether they're lining up with what actually happened. Um, well, when they talk uh, about Christ, uh, Christ's birth, and they talk about uh, um, three wise men seeing the, the star and coming upon a manger, is that mentioned all in in, in Pacific um, uh, passage of the Bible that this actually happened? Three wise men seeing the star and come across his manger. Yeah, the Bible doesn't say there were three. That that's that's the whole thing. So I some wonder if there was a dozen. Yes. Uh, it, some think it's more likely that there was a lot more than three. Mm -hmm. um, 
um, perhaps you know when we display pageants at Christmas time, it's become traditional to have three wise men, three sheep, three mm. three camels, three like three is just what we saw when we went to church to celebrate the event. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. It's a, maybe it's not practical to have a dozen of everything. <laughs> <laughs> so it's somehow it's just something that's. That, and there was a song written about the three wise men. I think it's probably what made it established in most people's yes. mind. Uh, Bring frankincense and myrrh. And, yeah. Yeah, an interesting thing too, it, um, you know, the Hallelujah chorus. Um, the Bible has the word Hallelujah, not Hallelujah. But um, uh, is it Mozart that wrote the Hallelujah chorus? I believe, yes, I believe it was. Yeah. He decided that it, he when he, when they were singing it, they were singing Hallelujah, and he wanted it to sound better, so he changed it to Hallelujah. So most people think that hallelujah is a biblical word that, like, you know, it's the one that most Christians are comfortable with now. And a lot of Bibles are changing it to hallelujah, the newer Bibles. But that was an invention of Mozart to add an H to the word. So uh, Moses kind of messed everything up. Mozart. Mozart. I just say there's a lot of traditions that have, that have sort of uh, shimmied around mm -hmm. uh, what we do at Christmas mm -hmm. time, even what we say. When we, that's one word that gets used more at Christmas time yes. than any other time of the year. Hallelujah, area. yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing how, how we have uh, passages in the Bible, and somehow some through the, through the method of actually breaking it down or, or different conversations, we somehow lose the meaning of what it really is supposed to mean, such as the word hallelujah or hallelujah. It seems well, to be lost in translation. One of the things I was touching on earlier, too, is that uh, because the, the celebration of Christians for the first three or four hundred years was primarily the beginning of Christ's ministry, not his birth. Mm -hmm. He would have been 30 years old when he began his ministry. Um, the eastern part of the Catholic Church, the, what we call the Eastern Orthodox, or the, the part that's uh, in Russia and um, in Turkey, but not so much in the West, um, it today celebrates Christmas on January 7th mm -hmm. because they used to celebrate the beginning of Christ's ministry that day but over time they've joined the idea well this is when Jesus was born mm -hmm. it's not they weren't celebrating that originally and the West knows why they were celebrating his birth because they arbitrarily chose to go a couple weeks before when he started his ministry to arbitrarily make that celebration that day so it's the way things drift it's why there's a, a January 7th um, I think Ukrainians celebrate. Uh, yes, I believe it is Ukrainian because my friend is Ukrainian. I believe it. And I had a friend that was Ukrainian too, and he and he thought it was because they could get cheaper presents on Boxing Day. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> when I asked him why they did that, <laughs> kind of misconception of what he was believing. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, these these traditions have a way of moving along. Yeah. And when you get back to Saint Nick. Um, the whole idea of Santa Claus was invented by Coca-Cola in the, you know, in the 1920s, eh? I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> they uh, took a picture of him drinking a Coke. Oh. They wanted him to have a red face, so they gave him about two or three beers first. Oh, that's to get, why I To get him it. reddened up, and they got a picture of a guy drinking a Coke. Mm -hmm. And said that he was St. Nicholas, all dressed up in red. But he was so White, whatever <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, ever since, that's what Santa Claus is now. But that was originally a poster by, by Coca-Cola mm -hmm. as Marketing an advertisement party. of Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, how, that's how we got the modern version of Santa Claus. <laughs> Big cher cher cherubic face, but it's really an alcoholic face. That's right, yeah. there's an alcoholic guy um, drinking a Coke. It's amazing how... <laughs> it's, it's I chuckle about that because uh, sometimes in the inner cities, the Santa Clauses they get are almost... You know, oh, well, oh, well, this is up to the image that we saw a couple of cool years ago. So I've seen you somewhere before. <laughs> Anyways. So, so you think, uh, all in all, uh, we're just probably going to wind up this, our Christmas special. In your opinion, how do you think that the media and the advertising has really handled the true meaning of Christmas? Or do you think they have, have exploited it for their own good? Well, as I said earlier, um, you know... For Christians, the true meaning of Christmas that we're celebrating is Christ's Mass, is what Christmas mm -hmm. means. It's the celebration of Christ, not the celebration of a drunk guy drinking a Coke or mm -hmm. uh, all the other things, right? Um, however, um, I'm not adverse to those that have other things they want to celebrate at Christmas time. 
because it started off as a pagan holiday, as a celebration of lights, which is why we've got lit up Christmas trees and things like that. Um, so I, I believe the true meaning is based on your personal beliefs. Mm -hmm. And if you, and, uh, For Christians, definitely the true meaning is to celebrate Christ. And I would like to invite all of our listeners to join that meaning for Christmas. Um, hundreds of years ago, um, to a large extent, pagan countries gave up their celebrations in deference towards allowing uh, Christian values to come in. And, and uh, because in mass, a lot of them came mm. to believe in the Christ of the Christian message. But in the last 100 or 200 years, there's been a drifting away where in the West we're becoming very secular and we might go to church once or twice a year, some of us, but a lot, to a large extent, the West has not got the same love for Christ or Christianity that it might have had 100 or 150 years ago. So I can understand why there's a constant struggle to reclaim the holiday mm -hmm. in a pagan manner. Like in this town, they're having a celebration of lights that they have every year after Christmas. They have something else they do in the middle of town. They don't mm -hmm. mention Christ or anything in it. No, no. It's an attempt to bring it back to what it originally was under paganism, you know. Exactly. You'll and find that the Wiccans, and we have Wiccans in this town, mm -hmm. they want to promote another way of celebrating the mm -hmm. season. But I, but I can't blame them because for them that's their true meaning. Mm -hmm. what, and, and so what I've said in this program tonight gives some ammunition for those that, that to realize that a lot of the traditions that we do aren't, cast in stone from the time Christ was here, even for Christians. Christians have encroached on a pagan holiday. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to admit that. If you actually want to celebrate when Christ was born, it would be in September. Mm -hmm. But uh, I see nothing wrong because of the fact that Christ is the light of the world. And when we have a very dark time of the winter time, and we'd like to celebrate that the light is coming, and Christ is the light to the Christian, it's a great time to celebrate Christ as the light of the world coming in at that time of year. What a great closing statement, Ray. <laughs> I'd like to thank all our viewers for tuning in uh, all year to Truth is What Matters. And you can leave a reply right on our website, and we hope to bring it up on next week's show. So on behalf of myself, Brad Snow, and Ray Love, we wish you all the best for upcoming 2013. And keep us tuned in, because we're... Bigger and better coming on 2013, and we've got some new features coming up on the show. So thank you very much for making this year successful, and looking forward towards the new year 2013. Goodbye. All right.